A quantum computer doesn't look or act at all like the computers that we use every day. It relies on different laws of physics to run calculations at super fast speeds. What happens when a computer stops waiting for time? Google just ran a quantum core that finished in minutes. What ordinary machines would chase for longer than the universe has existed? That means answers can now arrive before the question is even done. A result from the far future suddenly lives in the present. If that is real, every system built on slow math is exposed. And whoever controls this kind of speed controls discovery. Five minutes versus forever. Google's team chose a problem that punishes regular computers. It was not a business spreadsheet or a video render. It was a wall of random quantum circuits that grows in complexity every time you add another qubit or another layer. A classical machine has to trace each path like a person listing every possible chess game. Even the fastest supercomputers would need longer than the age of the universe to finish that list because classical systems move in sequence. One calculation, then the next, then the next. Google's new quantum core did something different. It lets the system hold many paths at once, measure them as a single picture, and collapse the result in five minutes. Five minutes against a number of years so large it stops feeling real. That is why people said it destroyed linear time. The computer did not cheat. It just refused to walk through time the way we do. Engineers will argue that this was a laboratory task and not a real-world application. That is true today. It will not stay true. Every major quantum milestone starts with a narrow test and spreads into fields that said they were not ready. The same playbook happened with machine learning. First narrow, then general, then everywhere. What matters is not that Google ran this specific benchmark. What matters is that it proved a machine on a lab bench can deliver answers at a pace that makes human planning look slow. Once you can do that with one problem, you can start to map other problems onto the same hardware. Chemistry, logistics, weather, energy, finance, anything that explodes in complexity when you add more variables is now a target. Once a machine shows it can ignore the usual limits, other machines will follow because every nation will want the same leverage. A five-minute answer to a forever problem is not a curiosity. It is a strategic asset. Whoever owns the box that bends time controls how fast others can react. So we have to ask right now, if one company can already do this in a protected lab, how long before a government demands exclusive access? And what happens to everyone else when the clock for innovation is no longer a decade, but a day? Another consequence hides in plain sight. When results arrive this quickly, legacy review cycles collapse. Peer review, board approvals, safety gates, procurement calendars, all of them were built for discoveries that took months or years. A discovery that takes minutes makes slow oversight look like neglect. That pressure will push institutions to shorten their own timelines, which increases the chance of mistakes, which in turn makes the fastest actor even more powerful because it can correct faster than anyone else. That is why this moment matters. What does time-free computing actually change first today for us? When time becomes a loop. The most unsettling part of Google's announcement was not the raw speed. It was the hint that the core could hold states in repeating cycles without losing precision. Classical systems always pay for time. Clocks drift, memory cells leak charge, batteries fade, bearings wear. Quantum systems built around stable phases and error-corrected qubits can do something closer to the opposite. They can enter patterns that repeat without aging. Physicists call some of these phases time crystals, systems that tick forever under a steady drive. In practice, this means a computer can keep data or a calculation path alive for as long as you keep the lab stable. No more periodic refresh, no more rot, no more fear that a long simulation will degrade before it finishes. For industries that run round the clock, logistics, radar networks, satellite swarms, this is not a curiosity. It is an answer to a problem that has cost billions of dollars in maintenance. Once you have loops that do not decay, you can build services that never need a reboot. Navigation constellations could hold their calibration for decades. Power grids could run forecasting cycles that refresh every minute without drifting away from reality. Climate labs could keep digital twins of the atmosphere 
always running and always synchronized. The machine does not have to start over because for it, there is no over. That kind of stability changes how software is written. Today we write code to survive failure. Tomorrow we will write code to stay in a clean rhythm. The hard part will not be the math. It will be keeping the physical environment quiet enough for the loops to stay pure. But this hides a sharper twist. Cycles that do not age are perfect training grounds for artificial intelligence. An AI that can run in a time loop can test, evaluate, and correct without the usual pause for hardware resets. It can iterate through thousands of policy choices while the human team is still drafting a strategy memo. It can probe failure modes in medicine, finance, even air traffic control, and surface the safest option before the people in charge have even gathered for the meeting. That is power because it lets whoever owns the quantum loop move from forecasting to pre-deciding. It makes slow rivals look reckless because their answers arrive when the risk has already passed. And if loops can run in secure facilities, they become invisible engines of advantage. So the question at the end of this loop is not, can we build it? The question is, who gets to keep a machine that does not get tired? How do we audit a decision born in an environment with no clock? And what happens to trust when systems begin to act before anyone asks them to explain why? The next leap is even stranger, because it does not only bend time inside the chip, it bends cause and effect itself. But if discovery no longer waits on time, can our networks, power grids, and AIs react fast enough to use answers that arrive instantly? Out of order on purpose, classical computing is built on a simple rule. First, do step A, then do step B, then decide what to do next. Quantum devices are starting to prove that this order is not always necessary. In some experiments, two operations can influence each other without a fixed sequence. Event A both comes before and after event B. The final answer is what decides which path mattered more. This is called indefinite causal order, and it sounds abstract until you map it onto real systems. Picture a global delivery network that can test every route in both directions at once and then pick the order that delivered the best outcome. Picture a power grid that can look at yesterday and tomorrow at the same time and route energy in the way that prevents overload. Picture financial exchanges that can resolve trades in the sequence that keeps the market most stable instead of the sequence in which the orders arrived. That is not a faster calculator. That is a planner that reaches across time to choose the version of events that causes the least damage. This breaks more than scheduling. It breaks the way we build trust. Today, we can audit a process by rewinding the log. We say this happened first, then this, then this. So here is the path to the decision. In a system with indefinite order, the path is shaped by the outcome, not the other way around. You can still log the physics, and you can still record the inputs, but the explanation to a human becomes harder, because our language expects before and after. Regulators, insurers, and courts will have to decide whether they will accept decisions that do not have one clean timeline. Many will say no at first, yet the advantages will be hard to ignore. Networks that can reorder events dynamically will waste less energy, lose fewer packets, and stabilize faster after an attack. Security tools that can test multiple response sequences at once will stop intrusions before the attacker finishes the move. Air traffic systems could check landing orders and takeoff windows in parallel, and then pick the blend that moves the most planes with the least fuel. Once one nation or one tech giant adopts systems that rewrite order on the fly, everyone else will follow even if the explanation is messy, because nobody wants to be the only player waiting on linear cause and effect. The next chapter looks at what that race does to encryption, to money, and to every field that hides behind slow math. To live with this kind of machine, we will need quantum audit trails that tag every branch, plus human timeouts where people can pause an automated choice before it locks. Those controls will slow the system a little, but without them, nobody will trust outcomes that arrived faster than the question that triggered them in the first place. And if quantum systems can bend order itself, what does that do to trust when the path to the answer is no longer in a straight line? When risk windows collapse, linear time has always been the shield for slow systems, 
A hospital could say results will be ready in three days. A bank could say fraud checks will clear by tomorrow. A power company could say it will take an hour to balance the grid. Google's quantum core turns that shield into a weakness because it shows that analysis can finish before the real-world event has even unfolded. Discovery science teams will be able to screen millions of molecular structures in a single morning. Portfolio managers will be able to run a century of market shocks over lunch. Logistics chiefs will be able to plan for storms, strikes, and supply failures before the weather map even updates. The barrier is no longer mathematics. It is human reaction time. If a company cannot read and act on a quantum result the moment it arrives, it is leaving money and safety on the table. This speed exposes a more dangerous gap. Our security systems still rely on problems that take a long time to solve. Public key cryptography, the technology that protects online banking, private messaging, and government traffic, is built on hard math. Factorization and discrete logs are slow for classical machines. A powerful quantum system can cut that time down brutally. That is why every standard body on the planet is now talking about post-quantum encryption. If the offensive side gets a time-free machine first, old secrets will fall in hours. If the defensive side gets there first, we can upgrade before the break. Either way, the schedule is no longer generous. It is tight and unfair to anyone who waits. Faster insight does not automatically mean better outcomes. Imagine a hospital that receives 5,000 treatment recommendations from a quantum-trained model in a minute. Doctors will need filters, triage tools, and explanation layers just to know which options are safe. A power grid that can compute perfect load balance before dinner still needs human operators to trust the numbers enough to flip the switches. Finance desks that can see crashes across many branches of time still have to answer to regulators who move on the pace of hearings, not qubits. So the next bottleneck is not math, it is governance. Whoever builds decision pipelines that can absorb quantum speed without losing human judgment will own the decade. Everyone else will drown in answers that arrive too quickly to use. So we have to ask, who is building review boards that can match five-minute breakthroughs? And who is still writing policies meant for a world that thought 10 years was fast? The next wave is already forming inside Google's own labs and in rival programs in China, Europe, and the United States. They are not just speeding up tasks. They are trying to erase time from the hardware itself. What does that look like when it leaves the lab and reaches homes, hospitals, and banks? So, if we can compute across timelines, who keeps us safe when old encryption, old laws, and old audits were built for slow machines? The race to own clockless power. Quantum speed is not just a science story. It is a power story. Every government with an advanced tech sector knows that a working quantum core can break old codes, model new weapons, and optimize defense logistics faster than any rival. That is why the disclosure pattern around breakthroughs is always the same. A company or lab shows a narrow result to prove it is real. Then communications slow down. Then the work shifts to programs with security clearance. The gap between what we see in press releases and what sits in classified facilities widens. Google's five-minute victory will trigger exactly that pattern because military planners can already see what could be done with a chip that ignores waiting. Think about satellite fleets. A nation that can run orbital traffic control on a quantum loop can move assets into clear orbits before a collision chain starts. Think about cyber defense. A security team with a time-free core can test thousands of patches and isolate strategies in parallel and deploy the best one in seconds. Think about economic planning. Ministries could model inflation, commodity shocks, and trade outcomes across many paths and choose the one that keeps employment and food supply most stable. None of these uses will be loudly shared with the public. They will be protected because the advantage is too great. But raw power will not be the only bottleneck. Data plumbing will. Quantum machines inside sealed rooms can finish a calculation in minutes, but the inputs and outputs have to move through ordinary networks. Sensors, field units, and analysts all operate at human, or at best, classical speeds. If the network that feeds the core is slow, the advantage shrinks. 
That is why the real winners will be the groups that redesign their entire pipeline around quantum tempo. They will collect data faster, clean it faster, label it faster, and send it to the core without delay. They will also build automatic explanation layers so that commanders, doctors, or executives can trust the result the moment it appears. Speed without trust is noise. Here is the twist for viewers who do not run armies or giant firms. The same technology that lets a state forecast a war plan before dawn can let an ordinary person see a lifetime of financial outcomes before dinner. The same hardware that lets an energy ministry balance a grid can let a city school system optimize bus routes every hour. The race to control clockless power will start in secure rooms, but the spillover will shape ordinary tools. So the question that follows is simple. If time can now be removed from computing, what happens to the parts of life that still need time to stay human? In other words, where do we draw a hard line and say, this decision must never be instant because people deserve space to think? That line will define the real ethics of quantum time computing, living with machines that do not wait. By now, the pattern is clear. Google's quantum core did not just run one impressive benchmark. It showed that time can become flexible inside the right hardware. That sounds thrilling until you imagine daily life with systems that are always ahead. Your doctor could have a treatment model ready before you finish describing symptoms. Your employer could run performance projections before the quarter even starts. Your bank could simulate how you will use credit for the next five years and adjust terms before you sign. That level of prediction will be sold as convenience. It will often be useful. It will also be tempting to abuse. People are not processors. We need time to change our mind, to learn, to digest bad news, to forgive. A world that reacts at quantum pace has to build in human pauses on purpose. Technically, the field still has hard problems. Every qubit added to a system makes keeping coherence harder. Error correction eats resources. Cryogenic hardware is expensive and delicate. Scaling from a lab rack to a machine that can sit in a factory or a hospital will take years. Engineers will have to solve data movement, cooling, and user interface problems that do not care how elegant the physics is. So linear time is not gone from the world. It is just no longer the final limit. Socially, the adjustment may be tougher than the engineering. We will need review boards that can say this answer is correct, but we will delay acting on it. We will need audit systems that can replay quantum decisions in language that non-specialists can understand. We will need schools and training programs that teach children how to question outputs that look perfect. The risk is not rogue artificial intelligence. The risk is passive people who assume that because a result arrived instantly, it must be true. Instant answers demand stronger skepticism, not weaker. Quantum speed is not only about thinking faster, it is about making tomorrow show up in the present. That can solve disease, food scarcity, and climate stress faster than we thought possible. It can also shrink privacy, speed arms races, and widen gaps between rich and poor if access is unequal. So the real question is not whether machines can destroy linear time. The real question is, who gets to rebuild the new kind of time we will live in? The outro of this story is not going to tell you to fear the future, it is going to ask you to help aim it. If quantum cores can make years arrive in minutes, then every viewer of this video has a part to play in deciding where that power points. Stay to the end because the choice is closer to you than it looks right now. Your pause today may be what keeps tomorrow from running over everyone else all at once. If you made it this far, you can see why Google's five-minute result is bigger than a single lab win. It is a signal that planning, security, research, and even daily work will soon run on clocks that feel unfair to humans. So here is the question. Stay informed, push for transparent quantum tools, and never accept instant answers that arrive without proof. Tell us in the comments which part of this shift excites you and which part scares you. Subscribe and share so more people hear it before the next leap lands. The faster machines get, the more careful and united we will have to be online. Stay curious, stay skeptical, and stay ahead of this curve.